Well, so, you know, something big is coming. Something big is coming through. Something big's coming down the pipe. How do I know that? Because I'm getting censored again. And if you've noticed, if you look around to other people that talk about, you know, these taboo subjects on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or any of the other main highly censored, already, already, we already know they're compromised. The FBI is all in the the back room. We got Homeland Security censoring people. We got this uh, this thing that just happened. We just found out about. I think that was today. You know, you have this Elvis Chan agent who was already. We already found out about him with the the Twitter files. Well, we come to find out he was involved with the censorship over at the Facebook too. And you know, you look you look him up, and you can f go back to like 2018 or 2020 or even 2022, where he's talking about the midterms and how he's gonna how the FBI feels like this is a safe election. Now, what does that even mean? We know that the whole time they're out there talking about Russian, oh, there's Russian influence and Russian misinformation. That was all lies. Like, the whole Russiagate thing completely was all lies. And that's when I started getting censored. I was on Facebook talking about Russiagate being bullshit. I might even have mentioned it on this channel here. I was all over Twitter talking about it. And I started, that's when things started getting censory on those platforms. So I can no longer talk about those things. But Russiagate was kind of like, once they got, they got that through and once the that was uh the public was basically mostly had an opinion about it or whatever that was it and then they decided okay we can do more lies we can go we can go to the next thing you know and back in 2020 when they were censoring people for talking about the Hunter Biden laptop um right leading up to 2020 it was basically like, you know, I knew then that there was something big coming because the censorship was more than just that, you know, like regular, regular, um, traffic, you might want to say to whatever was, was all reduced and everybody was talking about it. Just like right now, like I'm talking about how I got censored. I'm not the only one. Like I said, other people that are talking about what's really going on behind the scenes, well, they're talking about how their their reach has been getting decimated lately. And whether you subscribe to Twitter Blue or whatever uh, or not, you know, like, you still got censored. And people that were trying to monetize Twitter noticed that their reach was going down too. So basically, um, I know something big is coming because of the censorship and what is again people might be looking at me like b who who are you no one cares about you so what's the big deal why do you think it matters to them if you're censored well it's really not me and i'm i'm not even a representative of what the censorship is doing and who they're trying to censor and what kind of messages they're trying to uh tamp down like it was obvious during covid if you went against the covid narrative then, you know, like for the, for example, let's just say lab leak. If you went out there talking about how COVID was leaked out of a lab back in 2020, you were, you know, you were, you were censored. You were, your, your YouTube video was taken down, your Facebook post, either it got a thing put under it or it got taken down. And a lot of people got censored during that era and that's something where you can point to like, okay, they are, they don't want people talking about this. And in order to do that, they have to have their own story. So that's when they came out with, well, you know, it came from this wet market and anybody that says it came from a lab is, is crazy, racist, conspiracy theory, all the, all the names that they call you. And it turns out that what they were really doing was trying to rewrite history as it was happening. And they're still doing it. They're doing it with everything. We're in this weird post-truth era 
where they think that as long as they throw enough propaganda out there and also censor people that are on the other side of the propaganda trying to point out that it's fake and whatnot, then they will win overall if you look at the preponderance of things written about certain topics like coronavirus, masks, vaccines, anything that they censored people for talking about that what if they were talking against the mainstream narrative then you know they were making their case they had more talking points in their direction so they won and so that it's as as we go down later down the road in history you know those voices of people that were talking against the narrative were just going to fade away and disappear because you know quite frankly that's that's what they're still doing and that's why it's important for them to get rid of people like me because i'm i'm part of a consensus like if they put out a piece of information that they want you to believe and somebody is in the comment section saying oh no no that's that's not true this is what's really the deal and here's some documents to prove it they get, they just want to get rid of that guy and because they know that if you get rid of the big guys like Alex Jones let's take Alex Jones for example Alex Jones they were like well you know we're, we can get it, we can kick him off of Twitter we can kick him off of YouTube and all you know we can just get rid of him on social media and then he'll be gone like <laughs> um first of all that wasn't okay you know and i'm here to tell you that there's no such thing as dangerous speech this whole thing that they're talking about internet safety and dangerous speech and all that that's just and even hate speech hate speech in my opinion also just something they invented for anybody that they don't like talking about their what they're doing anyone that's telling the truth about what they're up to well you're going to be deemed a, a somebody that does hate speech and usually they go with anti-semite or racist or you know whatever and it's this is everybody knows this is what they've been doing for a long time it's how they they get rid of people they don't like but what we're really talking about here is narrative control and the way they do it so when they get rid of big people like Alex Jones it makes a big it makes a big wave and it, sometimes it'll bring more people out of the woodwork to defend somebody like Alex Jones and then then they did it to Trump a sitting president and they're going to kick him off of all the social medias and make an example out of him because he was supposedly spreading misinformation or whatever but you, especially Twitter you really can't find where the misinformation or the dangerous tweets or whatever you know like there isn't nothing there I, same with alex jones they literally kicked these guys off of the platform for no reason other than oh yeah this sounds like these guys are not on the right side of the narrative they got to get kicked off the the thing that where the narrative is being pushed and this is this is your government this is you, your taxpayer dollars are paying to do this you give the money to the government and then they hire people in the FBI to go to Twitter and they literally give Twitter hundreds of millions of dollars to do this work where they censor people. It's mind blowing to be honest that this is happening in America. And you know, I don't care if you're talking about the libertarians or the, I've heard progressives and other Democrats say this, oh, well, they're private companies, so they can do what they want. Well, no, that's not really the case. This is America, and we have free freedom of speech. We have a First Amendment, which protects you from the government trying to censor you, which I would argue in the, in the case of the Twitter files and the Facebook files, that is the government censoring you. That's the government censoring you through with a middleman to kind of like wash their hands of it, but they're, they're, they're the ones doing it. You know, we got proof, we got emails, we got, you know, communications and all these things where these FBI agents are talking to Twitter execs and, you know, the people in the government like Biden's people or somebody else, Fauci's people <clears throat> are talking to these agents and talking to Facebook and getting posts taken down and getting accounts um, suspended. <laughs>
They have, they, they're, this is called narrative control. Like I was saying, they're rewriting history in real time. And as long as they can keep pushing forward and having the majority of the talking points on their side, they think they're winning. They think they're going to, they're going to get away with this shit. I don't, I don't see how we're going to stop it, to be honest. I mean, we're not going to stop it by, you know, tweeting and making videos on their platforms and, you know, where every, where it's just a public thing and everybody's like, oh yeah, there's got to be, you know, there's got to be some way that, that, a, that them getting, you know, the reform that needs to happen is just not going to happen through voting or any of that. Um, but I'm getting kind of off topic. Let me get back to the narrative control thing. And one last point on that was that the manufacturing of consensus, and we've heard about the manufacturing of consent from Noam Chomsky, where, you know, the, the news media is just all one big distraction after another. And basically it's a manufacturer of consent for any horrible policy, but mostly he, I think he was talking in terms of uh, the policies around the, the, the imperialism and the war machine and that. And yeah, for sure there is some work to be done on the manufacturing of consent. Uh, but until we can get our, corporate media reformed or I don't even know what you're going to do there because again you can't reform something that is owned by such small amounts of people and they have such good ties with the government it's impossible you might as well just call the the cable news channels and the network tv news government news you might as well just call that state news I mean I've been calling it that my whole life but it's obvious now. I mean, if, if you need any more proof, just look at who donates to the news companies. Look who donates to the government. They're the same people. So if they want to say something, they just go to the, their news people friends and have it said. If they want to get something done, they go to their government friends. And it's almost like nobody's actually doing their job. They're just doing what the corporations want. So... Once they get the manufactured of consensus uh, techniques embedded into the social media platforms, there's really nothing we can do. And they're already there. And we haven't seen any evidence, at least I haven't, and many people I've been paying attention to have not seen any evidence that since Elon Musk took over Twitter, that the censorship, the shadow banning, the deleting, the suspending of accounts... I mean, I thought this was a free speech platform, but for some reason I apparently said something and I can't really discuss what I said on here because I'm kind of afraid that I'll get kicked off of here too, just for simply saying what I said on there, you know, and, and in my opinion, I don't think, and I can give you a hint about what it was about. It was basically about the Ukraine war and a certain, um, a certain thing that's been happening there since about 2013 that I've noticed, and and that would be certain um, factions funding the the actual Nazis in Ukraine to do things, you know, anti-Russian things or anti-Russian speaking people in Ukraine things, and you know I'm just talking about that and pointing out people that are. Um, trolls and bots doing that kind of content that kind of stuff where they're they're uh making it seem like you know well i can't like i said I, i'm just gonna stop now i i don't want to open this can of worms on youtube while i'm still still have the motivation to make videos but you know that's what they do is they get rid of these smaller people because it's so much easier you can get rid of me nobody cared Nobody on Twitter gives a shit about me. <laughs> you know, I'm not some account that people are, like, sharing because I have this this great wisdom or anything. I'm just a regular old weed-growing fool that 
quite frankly, I'm, I, I can't stay silent. I can't just sit here with all this shit inside and be like, ah, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. So I like to put my two cents in. And as long as I got this channel, I'm going to try not to get kicked off for what I know will get you kicked off of here. I mean, t this it, it's like we're walking through minefields on these social media apps. On Facebook, you can barely innuendo your way into telling somebody about anything truthful these days. If you're not talking about your cat, what you ate for lunch, or that your girlfriend's cheating on you, or just some dumb drama shit... In general, if you're not on that, then your Facebook presence isn't wanted, all right? And, and same with Instagram. Instagram is basically the same thing, only just pictures and very minimum words. And Twitter is the, is the center right now. It's where the left and the right in the political spectrum of America both are on there whether they there's been times when the right wingers were like oh i'm getting off of twitter this is bullshit this is a you know they're doing censoring right and they're all the psyops are for this liberal bullshit and then over on the left same thing they're like oh elon musk who by the way elon musk is not a right winger that i know of man the guy I don't know, and one thing I do know about him is he's heavily involved in DARPA, and he's like the number one contractor at the Defense Department. Like, I'm not a friend of Elon Musk. I've never said too many good things about him. I don't, you know, I don't go around saying bad things. I don't really have too much of an opinion either way on the guy. But what I do know is that he's full of shit when he says that he's trying to run a free speech. Uh, you know, a public square, and it's not very public if, even if you paid for it, if, if I paid my $8 a month, I probably would have still got suspended, because there's, literally, I know there's agents watching this video right now that are assigned to me, and they're out there doing, you know, whatever they can to make my life miserable, and, and I might sound like a paranoid, schizophrenic patient to say that, but I, I believe it now, you know, I've, I've been speaking truth to the power for way too long. You know, I know my censorship has been thumb on, thumb on the whole time I've been on any social media platform. I'm surprised I have any followers that aren't actual undercover feds or something. So it's whatever, you know, I'm, I'm not anybody though. I'm just some little guy in the middle of nowhere with no money. No following, no nobody that gives a, any any uh, no one that cared that I got kicked off Twitter the first time. No one cared this time. It doesn't matter. I'm just one of the easy low hanging fruits. And if they get rid of enough of those, then they don't have that comment section where most of the people in the comment section are on the side of the truth. <clears throat> and when they tell the truth, they're their words are, you know, I guess when, when, when they're in there telling the truth and it's, it's either in the form of memes, sometimes it's insults, sometimes it's just, hey, here's the facts and here's some documents, they, you'll find that they get, in, the, in Twitter's own little way, pushed to the bottom, you know, and you'll get a... And this is still true, even though Elon Musk took over and he said he was going to get rid of all the bots and all the, yeah. Every time you see somebody like Adam Schiff, who's been lying for the Democratic Party for a decade, and, you know, his whole, he's the Russiagate guy, he's the guy that did all the, the stuff with Trump since Russiagate, and, and, you know, for some reason he can put a tweet out with the most basic, obviously propaganda, sensational, hyperbolic bull crap about anybody, like mainly Trump, but I'm going to say it don't even have to be Trump, and he's going to have like 30,000 likes. Where'd those come from? There isn't 30,000 liberals on Twitter just dying to see the next Adam Schiff tweet. I promise you that. Twitter isn't 
you know, and especially after Elon Musk took over, I thought they all left Twitter. Somehow there's still 30 to 80,000 of them available to hit like within 10 minutes of somebody like Stephen King or any other person that just spouts out complete hyperbolic nonsense in the liberal world. Rob Reiner. I mean, there's a big list of these people. And I, I the list isn't big enough, though, to get 30,000 likes every time one of them drops a tweet. It just isn't. And those same identities or Twitter accounts or whatever are also in the comment section, you know, when someone says something about, hey, you know, it's it's uh, August of 2023, COVID isn't over, still put, still, you should still wear masks and get boosters, and, you know, and the comment section will be full of people giving positive uh, reaffirmation to that nonsense, that ab- absolute rubbish, while the people that are pushing back talking about, well, hey, what about all the studies that said none of this masking and jab stuff even worked? Or obviously, what about people that actually did the stuff and still got COVID? And you're not going to get more than 10 of those in that tweet anymore. I know probably a lot of it is that that's worn off and nobody really cares anymore. And it's like people on the side of like the truth are basically don't even want to stick their noses out for that in that fight at this point because we feel like we've already basically won it you know like and it's not something we celebrate because nobody likes the fact that we were right about vaccines not working the way that they said they were gonna um the injuries that are being not talked about by the mainstream uh or the cdc the the people that used to follow the science don't want to hear nothing about the science anymore and they thought, like I said, they, they think, and they will continue to think that they are going to win this and that they can put out whatever talking point they want. You know, like there's people uh, in the UK talking about starting lockdowns up again. I mean, they, they, that's, how, that's the hubris involved with this uh, narrative control business. They're so out of touch with the, what really people on the ground are feeling and talking about that they feel like they have no choice but to do the narrative control still and, you know, hope that it's working. And if they could actually get a litmus test of, of what people are feeling and saying on the actual ground, they would do it even more to try to act like, oh, well, we have to do more of this narrative control or we'll lose this argument or, you know... As we rewrite history, we can't write this part until we've made made sure that we have the majority of the consensus on it. And remember what I said about consensus. Not only do they have to have all those people in there to hit that like button every time one of these uh, hyperbolic libs go out and say something on Twitter, they also have to have them people in the tweet about the COVID's not over yet. Or that Hunter Biden is a nothing burger. <clears throat> or that, you know, Donald Trump, you know, Donald Trump and all the people like Jim Jordan and Marjorie Taylor Greene have to go to prison for, you know, lying about the election results. And it's just absurd, absolutely absurd stuff that we're hearing about. And when, they, when you see the tweet, you look, and of course, all of a sudden, it has, you know, 40,000 likes. You go to the comment section, and it's all these people with the with the Ukraine flags and the, you know, and the blue waves and the Biden this and the... It, it's crazy. There are just thousands of them somehow, and they're reaffirming the tweet. And like I said, they're the same people if you put up the COVID tweet or the whatever. Whatever the current thing is that the establishment wants to force feed you. And there's so much more of that going on right now because they're just kind of like throwing everything at the wall to do a divide and conquer, like, you know, super divide and conquer. 
this divide and conquer is on steroids right now. And, and I do think that a lot of it is because we are on the precipice of another election, one that the Democratic Party handily will rig. They already are rigging it as much as they can on their side. The Democratic Party does not want to have debates. They want Joe Biden to be the runner. They're not going to have any debates. They're not going to talk about it. They're just going to hide Joe away for the next year and hope that nobody notices. That's, that's their plan. And they're going to make sure that anybody else trying to run is going to get smeared and every attempt that they can do to thwart that campaign. And, you know, like, like Trump. With Trump, they're just, every time a new thing comes out about Hunter Biden and the Joe Biden crimes that are going on and that have been going on for a long time, once again, way back to when, in 2013, before all the stuff started happening in the Ukraine, you will find Joe Biden and all the crooked dealings going on there. And, you know, again, every time that happened, Trump gets an indictment. What? So now he's got three major cases to fight while he's trying to run for president. And I'm not, I'm not out here endorsing Trump or saying that I'm ever been a Trump voter or whatever. I'm just, I'm just a casual observer saying that's not what's supposed to happen in America. You're not supposed to invent shit and try to throw your political enemies in prison right before an election where they're doing really good. It looks like they might beat your guy. <laughs> it looks kind of obvious. So yeah, I, I feel like a lot of it is that. That is probably mostly what this is with this current uh, state of the censorship, which is going into hyperdrive. Even though, you know, there's hearings in Congress, daily updates about the... Uh, the 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 Twitter and the Facebook uh, FBI censorship, and despite all that, they're they're ramping up the censorship on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. And believe me, this is going to get worse before it gets any better. They're going to have more manufacturing of consensus by getting rid of more people uh, like me, and you know they won't get rid of the bigger accounts. Because it just makes too much noise and gets too many people fired up. And it, like I said about Trump and Alex Jones, when they did that, it just made more people get on there and talk about it. And eventually you you convert even the most diehard liberal that is just totally drinking the Kool-Aid on all this. That, hey, guess what? They're actually doing fascist shit over there by, you know, putting out massive amounts of propaganda censoring anybody that goes against their narrative, putting their political enemies in jail, funding actual Nazis in, in, in Ukraine, all right? That's, that's some stuff that is actually fascism, all right? And this current situation, I believe there is something big on the horizon, bigger than the election. The election's pretty big, and they're about to do a whole lot of shady stuff and they don't need to hear a bunch of noise from the peanut gallery. That's what it all is. <clears throat> they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear me. And they think that when somebody like that's still on Twitter, that's talking against, uh, you know, talking about what they're doing, somebody on YouTube and Twitter and whatnot, uh, I don't want to name any names, but if, you know, if somebody with a big account, I mean, it was weird that Jordan Peterson had a video pulled just because it was an interview with RFK Jr. That's a huge account, you know, on, that was YouTube. On Twitter, it, it's not that obvious, but what, they, what they're, they're banking on is they're going to get rid of enough low-hanging fruit like me, and then when somebody does put out truthful content on there, they'll have enough of their trolls and bots in there to manufacture consensus the, uh, the other way, like what we do when they put out propaganda and lies. Um, I'm going to cut this off because it's about a half hour long and I, I didn't expect that. But uh, I'm going to keep making videos, man, because this has got to be done. 
and it, not because I, we need one more person talking about all this stuff. There's plenty of people. I'm nothing special, but I am passionate, and I do really want to continue to do that. This is the only way I got to get this out, so peace.